Hi everybody, it's Frank here. Well, this is part three of my series on using VirtualBox. In this part, I'm going to show you how to use one of the best features of VirtualBox called snapshots. So what is a snapshot? Similar to how a camera captures a picture of things as they were at a single point in time, the snapshot does this for your virtual hard drive. And the best thing about it is you can go backwards or forwards anytime you want. Basically, it's a cool way to travel through time without the need for a flux capacitor or 1.21 gigawatts of power. So why do this? Well, one good reason is to create a restorable state that you can go back to if the system is messed up. For instance, you get a virus, kids have been using it and did something to it, you installed new software or a software update or something and now everything is all messed up and you want to just go back to where it was before this. Another good use of this is to create various lab scenarios with different configurations of an operating system if you're studying that operating system. For instance, if you're studying Windows Server or something and you want to have different configurations of server labs all created, you can set up any combination of server labs here and just revert back and forth to snapshots to get you to the configuration you want to work on that day. Pretty cool. So how does all this stuff work? Well, in order to get it going here, you need to create an initial snapshot, which will be the parent virtual disk. Now, in my Windows 8.1 machine, you can see I don't have any snapshots. It just says current state. So what I'm going to do, this machine is powered off right now. I'm going to go ahead and click on this button and create a snapshot. And we'll just give it a name. And just click OK. And it's just going to take that a second. And now we have the snapshot. Here's the snapshot here with a little camera icon. And notice it's already got this, this line here that says current state. And that's because the current state is based off of this initial install snapshot that I created. That snapshot is now the parent virtual disk. So anything that happens with that machine now, even if I just go ahead and power it on and do nothing with it, but just anything that happens there, you can see it says changed right now. And that's only because I turned it on. So anything that I do with that virtual machine now, if I open files, delete things, add new files, add programs to it, whatever, is going to be written into a differencing image file. And when I start that up, it's going to read that differencing image file and compare it sector by sector to what's in the read-only parent virtual disk. Now, if I go ahead and create another snapshot from here, which I can do, I'm going to go ahead and power off this machine here. Shut that down. If I go ahead and create a new snapshot based on this, which is easy enough to do, I'll just call that, just give that some kind of description and a name. And now you can see that I've got the current state is the new Differencing image file that it creates that's going to record any differences made after this snapshot 2. And this snapshot 2 is based off of this parent virtual disk initial install. So now that I've got my initial parent virtual disk and another snapshot made of that, let's say I wanted to go back in time and go back to this initial install. What would happen here is, and I can do that easily here, just say restore, since I've made no changes, that's easy enough to do, is what it'll do now is just essentially ignore the snapshot 2 because it's irrelevant now. And you can always go back to the snapshot 2 if you want to just by restoring that. And now I've gone from the past back to the future into my current state snapshot. Very cool. So what is a snapshot tree? Well, let me show you that on Linux Mint 17, where I made a number of different snapshots here. I created my initial parent virtual disk here, the initial snapshot. And then I thought, well, I want to go in here and change a few things. So I changed some desktop settings and added some software and so forth and created a new snapshot there. And then I thought, well, I'll change that a little bit more. And I created a new snapshot there. But this snapshot, start of video three, is based off of this one. So when I'm in this snapshot, it's reading this differencing file here, new desktop settings, and the parent virtual disk. And I also went back in time and restored this snapshot 
and then created a new one over here that I called evening desktop where I made some other changes to it and you can see I now have a tree of things here because I can create different snapshots based off of this one or I can create more snapshots based off of this one or this one any one of them and you have a whole tree of directories that you can choose where you want to be after that was done I went back to my original state so the current state right now is the desktop the way it was before without any changes to it okay so let me show you how to create a snapshot and as is typical there's more than one way to do it and one way is preferred so let me show you with my Linux Mint 17 machine running let's say I want to change this background here just to show you something is different okay so I changed the background and now I'm gonna go ahead and I want to save this machine state so let's say I deleted this document okay so I changed the background on here I deleted the document that was down here and let's say I want to save this machine state right now or this virtual machine there's two ways to save this snapshot you can do it while the machine is running go into machine and take snapshot or you can do it with the machine powered off and there's a big difference and I'll show you that here in a minute but for this example I'm just gonna power this off here send the shutdown signal and then save this snapshot with the machine off and the only thing I have to do here is click on current state and then just click on the snapshot button and give it some kind of a name and it's always a good idea to create a snapshot description as well and we just okay that and it's going to take about a second and there it is now this current state now is based off of this yet another background image snapshot which is based off if I follow the tree the initial parent install and that's about it if I start this up now it's going to start up just the way I left it off now let me show you the other method of saving a snapshot while the machine is running let's go ahead and start up Windows 8.1 okay I've got my Windows 8.1 machine started up and I've opened up file explorer to look in the C drive and if I wanted to create a snapshot base from here I just go into machine and take snapshot and what this is going to do and it looks like the same thing here same process I'll give it a name here something like that we'll just okay that now what this is doing is this is taking a snapshot but it's also saving the machine state and let me show you that difference here I'm gonna go ahead and power this off send the set shutdown signal okay now that that's powered off you can see it has a little green arrow next to it here and that means that it saved the machine state and if I go back to this and just restore that snapshot and I don't want to create a new image here just restore that notice that the system is not showing powered off it's showing as saved and this will start up very quickly okay now that started right back up nice and quickly looks really good I can start back up right where I left off the night before let's say and that's a great thing to do for saving the machine state when you shut down the machine and just want to continue the next day but if you're doing this to save a snapshot you need to keep in mind when you do that save it from a running machine it's writing to that differencing file everything that's in RAM so if you have you know four gigs of RAM assigned to this machine and that RAM is all filled up doing whatever it's going to write a four gig file on your hard drive and you probably don't want that it's going to take a while and use up a lot of space so that's the real difference there taking a snapshot while it's running saves the machine state and writes everything in RAM onto that snapshot file and taking a snapshot when the machine is powered off just simply writes the file it's a much smaller file so let me show you how to go back and forth in time between snapshots on my Linux Mint 17 machine you can see that I have all these different snapshots here but my current state is based off of the initial parent virtual disk I actually went back to that when I was done creating these other ones now to go to let's say this one here this last one I created what I'm gonna do just to revert to that is just click on restore and it's gonna ask me here if I want to create a snapshot of the current machine state and why does it ask that because after I went back in time here to this initial one the current state is shown as changed 
because I started that machine and I may have done some things to it and it wants to know if I want to save all that. If I uncheck this and then click restore, any of those changes will be dumped. They'll be forgotten about forever. And generally speaking, that's what I like to do. But they make this a default just to make sure you don't lose anything you don't want to lose. So in my case, I don't want to do that. I'll uncheck that box and I'll just click restore. And in just seconds, it's already back to this other image. And I can start that up. And there's my virtual machine that I'd made some changes to, deleted a document here, changed the background, and due to the miracle of video editing, it starts up immediately. So let me close this one, send the shutdown signal, and then I'm going to go back to start a video three. Let's go back to that one. And the same thing here, I'm just going to click on the restore snapshot, and it's going to ask me this again. Well, I didn't make any changes, so I'm not going to do that. I'll uncheck that and click restore and then start this one up and we'll see what it does. And now we have this desktop that I was playing with. That document that I deleted later is back. I can still open that. And that's just an example of how easy it is to switch back and forth between these different snapshots. So I'm going to go ahead and close this one. And hopefully this shows how easy it is to create these snapshots and go back and forth between them. As long as you saved what you're currently working on as a snapshot, there's no risk of losing anything if you go back in time or forward in time to different snapshots to do various different things. So let me give you a few recommendations of what I do and how I use the snapshots. And the first one is do not take snapshots while the machine is running unless you have to. Now sometimes if you're a programmer or something, you do want to create a snapshot of a particular machine state that you can go back to later if you're debugging memory or something goofy like that you may want to do that but for 99 percent of us or more you don't want to do that because it writes such a big file so don't take snapshots while the machine is running unless you have to another one is deleting snapshots and you might think well i've got all these snapshots some of these i just don't want anymore well if the snapshot you created is in the middle of a tree here somewhere and you go to delete that what it has to do is it has to write all those changes back to all the other snapshots that depend on that so if you have a whole series of snapshots and you delete one right in the middle of that series it has to write all those changes to all the other snapshots that it depends on so that can take a bunch of time my recommendation is don't delete snapshots you can change the description on them just say no longer needed just okay that and then you know not to go back to that one so don't delete snapshots unless you really have to because it could end up taking a bunch of time to write all the changes to all the other files another recommendation is let's say you're on this snapshot here and you want to restore some other snapshot you haven't really made any changes to want to keep but when you go back here to let's say this one and choose restore it's going to automatically create a new snapshot of your current machine state so you don't lose anything just kind of be aware of that if you don't need to do that just uncheck that and then restore because otherwise you're going to end up with a bunch of snapshots that don't really make any sense and you don't really need just an idea just check that make sure you want to do that another recommendation is every time you create a snapshot Make sure you put a descriptive name in here and also some kind of description so that you know exactly why you saved this, what was different about it and everything. That'll really help you out in the future if you've got 30 or 40 of these things saved or more. Finally, the other recommendation I would say is get a lot of use out of this great feature. This is really handy and one of the best things about VirtualBox or virtual machines in general is that you can go back in time with this. Make sure when you install new software you create a snapshot before you do that or new drivers or some new update to the operating system. Get a snapshot of that so that you can always go back to that later if something doesn't work out. At the very least, you want to make sure you get a snapshot of the initial install. Once you install a virtual machine, create a snapshot of it. Once you add all the updates to it, create a new snapshot of that. So you can always go back to a fresh install if something goes wrong later.
Well, that's it for this video on snapshots in VirtualBox. I hope you found that useful and informative. If you did, give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that. And make sure you don't miss the next part in this series. In part four, I'm going to show you how to do sharing of folders from the host operating system to the virtual machines. And that's something I use all the time. It's a really handy feature to have and a little bit tricky with Linux. And I'll show you the ins and outs of that. It's not all that hard. So don't miss out on that. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel so you'll know when that comes out if it's not out already. And until next time, cheers.